Very early in my work as therapist, I discovered that simply listening to my client very attentively was an important way of being helpful. So when I was in doubt as to what I should do in some active way, I simply listened. And it seemed surprising to me that such a passive kind of interaction could be so useful. And a little later, a social worker whom I hired who had had a background of Rontian training was really uh, most helpful to me. She helped me to learn that the most effective response, the most effective listening was where you listen for the feelings and emotions that were behind the words, that were um, just a little bit concealed and um, where you could discern a pattern of feeling behind what was being said. And I think she's the one who first suggested that the uh, best response to, was to reflect these feelings to the client. And reflect is a word that later made me cringe. Um, the research evidence keeps piling up and it points strongly to the conclusion that a high degree of empathy in a relationship is possibly the most potent factor and certainly one of the most potent factors in bringing about change and learning. I've seen a willingness on the part of many to take another look at ways of being with people which evoke self-directed change and locate power in the person, not in the therapist. And this brings me again to examine carefully what we mean by empathy and what we've come to know about it. To formulate a current description, I would want to draw on the concept of experiencing as, as formulated by Jean Gendlin. Briefly, it's his view that at all times there is going on in the human organism a flow of experiencings to which the individual can turn again and again as a referent in order to discover the meaning of what he is experiencing. He sees empathy as pointing sensitively to the felt meaning uh, which the client is experiencing in this particular moment. In order to help him focus on that uh, meaning and to carry it further to its full and uninhibited experiencing. An example may make more clear both the concept and its relation to empathy. A man in an encounter group is uh, making some vaguely negative statements about his father and the uh, facilitator says, it sounds like you might be angry at your father. No, I don't think so. Dissatisfied with him? Mm, perhaps. Disappointed in him? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I am disappointed in him. I've been disappointed in him ever since I was a child because he, he is not a strong person. I think that kind of an example, uh, well, uh, does, does illuminate Gentleman's uh, concept in this way. Against what is the man checking these various terms? Angry. No, that isn't it. Dissatisfied. Well, that's closer. Disappointed? Ah, that matches the flow of, of I think, visceral experiencing that's going on within. And a person has a very sure knowledge of, of that flow and can really tell when you're speaking to it. In other words, the right word taps the, uh, the right label or the right phrase often taps the, the exact meaning of the flow that is going on within him that he hasn't been able to uh, label or, or understand himself. It enables him to bring into awareness the, the real meaning of, of what's going on within. So uh, with that conceptual background, I'd like to attempt a description of empathy which would seem satisfactory to me today. I would no longer be terming it a state of empathy, which was in my earlier definition, because I believe it to be a process rather than a state, and, and perhaps I can capture that quality. The way of being with another person, which is termed empathic, has several facets. It means entering the private perceptual world of the other and becoming thoroughly at home in it. It involves having sensitive, being sensitive moment to moment to the changing felt meanings which flow in this other person, to the fear or rage or tenderness or confusion or whatever that he or she is experiencing. It means temporarily living in his life, moving about in it delicately, without making judgments, sensing meanings of which he is scarcely aware, but not trying to uncover feelings of which he is totally unaware, since this would be too threatening. 
It includes communicating your sensings of his world as you look with fresh and unfrightened eyes at elements of which he is fearful. It means frequently checking with him as to the accuracy of your sensings and being guided by his responses. You are a confident companion to him in his world. By pointing to the possible meanings in the flow of his or her experiencing, you help him to focus on this useful type of reference, to experience his meanings more fully and to move forward in his or her experiencing. <laughs>